Hey, it's Mike. Thanks for tuning back in. Saturday, I don't know, what is this? Day 17 in a row of doing a video? It's been fun. Am I wearing the same sweatshirt as yesterday? Yeah, I am. It's Saturday. Leave me alone. Uh, just a quick reminder, a few videos ago, this giveaway, go back, subscribe, comment, like that video, and you'll be entered in this giveaway. I am just loving all the Jeter comments. I'm not really, just kidding. Uh, but they, they are just as eligible. Uh, I'm also still collecting emails for PC displays. I think I'll do that video tomorrow. So send me an email, thejunkwaxhero at gmail.com. If you have a cool display of your personal collection, I've gotten a lot. I've gotten like 12 or 13. Some are amazing. They're all unique. They're all really cool. So I'm excited to do that video. I'll probably do that tomorrow. And then I have something lined up for Monday, Tuesday, if we can get that done. So let's hope. Um, <clears throat> so this one comes to us from Twitter. Just a really interesting, fun story I saw. Don't go follow me on Twitter. I'm, I'm really boring there. I just go to find stories like this and find interesting stuff. I don't ever post anything. But so if you're familiar with the history of Wrigley Field, you know that Wrigley opened in 1914. Uh, the Cubs actually didn't have a home game there until 1916, but it didn't become Wrigley Field. It was renamed in 1927, but they didn't have their first night game under the lights until 1988, August 8th. And we're going to talk about that, the intricacies of that in a moment. Uh, so 1988, it was 60 years after they renamed the park Wrigley, and 70 some odd years after they opened, 74 years after they opened, before they had their first night game. Um, the first Major League Baseball night game was actually in 1930. So, you know, they're almost 60 years behind the rest of, or at least the, the on the cutting edge teams of Major League Baseball who were playing night games 60 years before. So the first night game was on August 8th, 1988. Ryan Sandberg had a home run but it got rained out before the five innings was up. And you know baseball, if you don't finish nine inning, or five innings, the game isn't considered complete. So they started over the next night and Ryan Sandberg's home run wiped out. So the first official Wrigley Field night game was August 9th, 19, 1988. Frank DePino got the win in relief of Mike Bilecki. Goose Gossage got the save uh, for the Mets. Their opposing team, uh, Lenny Dykstra and Howard Johnson, got home runs, but the Cubs did win 6-4. to four. But because it was such a big thing, I remember this as a kid. I remember thinking, wow, I can't believe they don't have night games yet. I had been to a night game the year before for the Red Sox in 1987, my first Major League Baseball game. Uh, I remember the wind was blowing out, and it felt to me like there were a lot of home runs hit at Fenway. Um, but I've gone back and I've looked for a box score where a lot of home runs were hit. I couldn't find one in 1987, so probably just crazy memory. So Ryan Fagan is a guy I follow on Twitter. He goes by at MyJunkWax, so you know I'm going to like this guy. Uh, he always does. He opens a pack of junk wax and he posts the cards and says, tell me a story about one of your favorite players here. And people always tell stories. And, Sometimes there's something interesting there. Today there was. So he did this, and one of the cards was the 1989 score card that commemorated or memorialized that first night game at Wrigley. Somebody responded to Fagan's tweet saying, who got that Cubs card signed by everybody from the Cubs that game? And then OAC cards responded to that. What a, it's amazing when Twitter works well. OAC cards says, wasn't that? And then they tag this guy named Daniel Wilson. Daniel Wilson puts in a picture of all of his cards that he got signed. So I thought this was awesome. I mean, it's a great opportunity to share a really unique um, project, I guess, a unique collection. And so I responded to him saying, this is really cool. Do you mind if I do a video on this? And he said, absolutely not. Go for it. And so I asked him, were these all obtained via TTM? And he said, most of them were. In 2013, he bought a lot of the same card from Sports Lot. And uh, so then he got the Ryan Sandberg, Andre Dawson, and Goose Gossage are reliable, easy TTM guys. He got those three quickly and easily. Damon Berryhill he sent to 
the, sent the card twice, no response either time. So finally he got somebody who got it for him on Twitter. Again, when Twitter works, it's awesome. Ultimately, it took him five years to complete this project. Uh, no response to somebody asking him why he didn't get Bill Murray to sign it. Um, he should. I think he definitely should get Bill Murray somehow. It's got to be a private signing somewhere where he can get it or, you know, if you're dedicated to the project. Bill Murray was there with Harry Carey in the, in the uh, announcer's booth that night. So I thought that was pretty cool. So here's each of the cards. You've got Sean Dunstan, Ryan Sandberg, Mark Grace, Andre Dawson, Vance Law, Mitch Webster, Rafael Palmero, Damon Berryhill, Mike Bilecki, Manny Trio, Frank DePino, Jody Davis, Darren Jackson, Pat Perry, Jerry Mumphrey, and Goose Gossage. Really neat project. Uh, I think it, it would be fun to do more of these type of things after I'm done with the PC displays. Don't start sending, me, sending them to me yet. I'm not organized enough to have two of these projects going on, but it would be fun to do a video series with this type of thing. So anyway, thanks very much for watching. If you're new here, click that subscribe button. Uh, I'm putting out daily videos at this point. Thanks very much for watching.